Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. We have 1 over 5 plus 2 over 25 plus 3 over 125, so on and so forth, where the numerators are consecutive positive integers, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, and the denominators are powers of 5, starting with 5 to the first power. I want to describe this, I want to explain this clearly so that there is no misunderstanding because sometimes people say, oh, this sum is ambiguous, you know, we don't have enough information. Yes, uh, you can say all that, but uh, what is meant here is what I just said, okay? And we could definitely express this using a sigma notation, which would probably be a little more uh, maybe clear. Like you can say, okay, this looks like n equals 1 to infinity n divided by 5 to the power n. Make sense? Okay, great. So if you replace n with 1, you get the first term, so on and so forth. So that's the sum we're trying to evaluate. But obviously, one of the questions is, does this sum converge? In other words, do we have a finite sum that we can evaluate? Because some sums cannot be evaluated uh, if there are infinitely many terms. For example, the harmonic series, right? For example, does not converge, which means that uh, there is no finite sum for this. But if you add uh, instead the squares, then you do have a solution. You probably know this, right? We talked about this uh, earlier in another video. Uh, some of the reciprocals of squares or squares of reciprocals. This can be found, and there is something called a p series, uh, one over n to the p. If p is greater than one, and then the sum converges. Okay. Anyways, and there's a way to show that this one diverges. Uh, how do you do that? By comparing it to powers of uh, one half. In other words, the reciprocals of powers of... Anyways, that's a different story. Let's get back to this. How do we evaluate something like this? First of all, let me tell you that this does converge. And we're going to evaluate it based upon uh, something well known, co uh, what's called an infinite geometric series. Okay. What do I mean by that? Something that looks like this. 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed, so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity. If r is between negative 1 and 1, then this sum converges and it converges to 1 over 1 minus r. Obviously, you can also verify this by cross multiplying and you'll get 1 from here. But if r is greater than 1, and obviously um, greater than or equal to 1, I should say, or less than or equal to negative one. By the way, uh, why do we have that those intervals? Because if this sum does not converge for anything greater than or equal to one, obviously the opposite side, uh, if you think about the symmetry, anything less than or equal to negative one also gonna make it uh, non-convergent or divergent because you can basically pull out a minus gigantic uh, minus sign, okay? Make sense? Cool, uh, but the thing with negative numbers is that's gonna alternate. And then there is something called an absolute convergence, conditional convergence, so on and so forth. But in this case, we don't have it because our sum is just, everything is positive, so it's good. So how do we use this, that's the million dollar question, to evaluate our sum? If you look at our sum carefully, you're gonna realize that it's first made up of, oh, by the way, if your term, if your first term isn't one, like let's say you got a sum like this, right? You could evaluate it exactly the same way, just take out an r, and now the inside, we know that this is one over one minus r, so this just becomes r over one minus r. And if the first term is different from r, again, you can do the same thing. You can always factor out if you know that this piece is going to converge, which is the case uh, for this type of interval, okay? Cool, so now we have uh, something that starts with one over five, and then two over 25, and then three over 25, right? And goes on forever. Now, if r is one over five, let's say this starts with r, the second term was supposed to be one over five squared. And the third term was supposed to be one over five cubed. But in this case, it's multiplied by two, so maybe, there is a term, but it wouldn't make sense. Like, if it was like this, right, then it would make sense. If we had 2 over 5 and then 2 over 25 and then 2 over 125, you could factor out a 2. But the thing is, the numerators are always different. So it's kind of like a really weird scenario. But guess what? 
we're going to use this one to evaluate it. How do we do that? Let's go ahead and do the following substitution because substitution is amazing and it makes things a lot easier. You know how? We're going to go ahead and replace this with R. And again, we can use X, we can use R, doesn't matter. But let's just use R. And then the second term is just going to be, if you think about it, it's actually 2 times 1 over 25, and the third one is 3 times 1 over 125. So there is a relationship between the number that multiplies the r or r squared or r cubed and the power of r. Uh, it's in, in the same term. For example, here, this is 1 over 5 squared. Here, it's cubed. And it's not a coincidence that these numbers are the same, right? There's a reason behind it. And of course, I can always write this as 1 times 1 over 5, which is usually not written, but it's hidden. You can tell, right? So what does this look like to you? If I call this R, if I call this R, then from here I'm getting 1R, or just R, plus 2R squared, plus 3R cubed, plus 4R to the fourth power, dot, dot, dot. You get the idea. In other words, we're going to get something like N times R to the power n, right? n equals 1 to infinity. Now, the way we wrote the sum using sigma notation first kind of involved a quotient, which wasn't very helpful. Obviously, you could always write this as n times 1 over 5 to the n, but then by considering this, like turning it into something like r, things will be a little easier. Now, why do I say that? Because how would you get something like n r to the power n? We do know this. So let me tell you, if n starts with 1, uh, we, ha we have that this sum is equal to r over 1 minus r because the first term is r. We start with r, right? Remember, we talked about it. So how do you go from this one to that one? So the first method, for our first method, actually, we can use differentiation, right? How do we use differentiation? You can actually go ahead and differentiate r to the power n. What's the derivative of r to the n? Think about it. It is n times r to the power n minus 1. Wait a minute. You did not get n r to the n. That's what we need. But don't worry. We can multiply both sides by r, and that'll do the trick, because now this will give you r to the power n. You see, it's easy to adjust because r is constant. n is a variable here. It's the index, right? So then what I can do is take this sum, which is r plus r squared plus r cubed, dot, 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 and then maybe just differentiate it. So let's go ahead and call this uh, f of r. And then f of r is just going to be uh, 1 over r over 1 minus r. And then f prime at r is going to be 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared plus 4r cubed and so on and so forth. Is this our sum? Let's take a look. Well, we had r plus 2r squared. We don't have that exactly, right? So what we should do is maybe uh, to in order to start with r and continue with r squared, we need to subtract something from this, don't you think? Or would it work if I just differentiated this? Would it be better? If I differentiated this, I would be getting, oops, I forgot to write the r. So if I had 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and differentiated it, I would be getting 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared. Same thing, it wouldn't matter because the derivative of 1 is 0. So that wouldn't make a difference. But how do I go from this one to this one? Let's go ahead and write the sum we're looking for, and then we're going to try to get there, okay? Our sum, the sum we're looking for is r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed, dot, dot, dot. So if I go ahead and do the little manipulation here, and remember, in our differentiation process, we have to multiply by r to get that. So that kind of tells me, Okay, maybe I, I can multiply the deri derivative of f by r, and that should give me what I need. So r times f prime is going to be r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed plus 4r to the fourth power, dot, dot, dot. Wow, exactly that's what I needed, right? So that's the answer. Great. But what is that equal to r f prime r? Since f of r is equal to this, r over 1 minus r, I can go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to r uh, using the quotient rule, the derivative of r times 1 minus r minus the derivative of this, which is negative 1 
times uh, the first function r divided by 1 minus r squared. So f prime of r is going to give me 1 minus r plus r divided by 1 minus r to the second power. r cancels out. We end up with 1 over 1 minus r squared. Since r is equal to 1 over 5, I'm supposed to evaluate f prime at 1 over 5, which is the sum I'm looking for. 1 over 4 over 5 squared is going to be 25 over 16, which should be the sum of the series that I'm looking for. Okay, great. This is the first method. What is the second method, right? We have 1 over 5, 2 over 5 squared, 3 over 5 cubed, so on and so forth, right? Again, by the same token, same idea, we call this r, and then we got r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed, dot, dot, dot. So here's what I can do. I can actually expand this, okay? This will be r over 1 minus r, and then my next term can start with r squared, and which means that I'm going to either take out an r or multiply both sides by r, which is going to give me r squared over 1 minus r. And then I can start the same series with r cubed, which should be r cubed over 1 minus r. And I can keep doing this infinitely many times. And then I'll be getting 2r squared, 3r cubed, 4r to the fourth, so on and so forth. So my desired sum is then is going to equal all these, but they all have the same denominator. So we can just add the numerators. And again, that's infinitely many terms, but with a common denominator. And this is just the same thing as r over 1 minus r divided by 1 minus r. Again, that's going to be 1 over well, r over 1 minus r squared. And then by substitution, you should be able to find the answer the exact same way. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.